Hey guys, I wanted to give you an update here on the Boros stack. So currently Mythic rank 322 and rebuilt the Boros um, human stack. I also have a couple budget versions sort of flying around, um, which I can link in the description as well. And I just want to get some feedback from you guys. Um, do you like seeing kind of the standard events, best of one, where it's um, you're trying to play for seven wins? Do you prefer to see kind of more of like the play on ladder? Um, I definitely am trying to hit top 250 for this month, so I will be doing some of that. But I would love to get your feedback, and um, yeah, I think those standard events are actually kind of fun. So let me know what you think. If you're a new viewer, thank you so much for stopping by, and would love to see more of you. Please consider subscribing if you like my content. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much again for your support. You guys really make it all happen, so thank you guys. But yeah, here is the updated Boros Humans deck. It is currently 3-0, uh, and so 100% win rate so far, but um, just a couple games under my belt. The, um, I guess, major update here is we do have three copies of Invasion of Goba Khan, which I haven't actually seen in play yet, but I was running with a different list and seemed to work really well against kind of the control matchups. Um, just being able to you know, interact with the opponent's hand does seem pretty powerful here. So being able to also find another way to give counters to all my creatures and start buffing them up and giving them um, the ability to gain hexproof and destructible is really nice. But other than that, you've just got your regular cast of characters here. We've got the Resolute Reinforcements and Knight of Aaron of Eos package, Copper Coat Vanguard, uh, three copies of Thalia, and then three copies of Adeline here at the top. Imidane's Recruiter is just the only red card in the deck, but it really does sort of take it home, and it is such a powerful effect, um, as I think a lot of people have seen in like the budget, uh, or just the uh, the Boros Convoke decks. And then for our one drops, we've got Warden of the Inner Sky, Recruitment Officer, Lunark Veteran, and then adding in two copies of Hopeful Initiate just to get some more kind of early game going. Uh, it does have the ability to grow, and then also having some interaction with artifacts and enchantments is kind of nice. For the mana base, we have 21 sources, um, 18 sources of white. Actually, um, everything here can produce white with the Myrix just for one turn. And then we have up to 15 sources of red with the uh, Myrix, Cavern of Souls, Secluded Courtyard, both naming human and then Battlefield Forge. So with all that said, let's hop into a couple games and I'll probably be doing yeah more of the uh, standard events. Those do seem to be kind of fun. So again, just give me your feedback. Let me know what you guys think. All right, really like this opening hand. We've got great stuff to do here on turns one, two, and three. Happy to keep. We do have two copies of Iganjo in hand, which is a little clunky, but I think we should be able to... Uh, we only need three mana for one turn, so that should be fine. Okay, possibly up against... Um, this is kind of a strange card to see in Slesnia Enchantments, because that is a pretty fast deck, so maybe this is a little bit of a different build, or some different deck. But here, happy to... Since we don't have Knight of Aaron of Eos in hand, I think just putting out the Vanguard here will push some extra damage, and then on turn three we can go Invasion if we want, or just Adeline. Also, Green White is uh, I'm expecting a little bit less removal here. Um, okay, so it looks like it's some sort of kind of control build. Probably runs some amount of Sunfall or maybe even temporary lockdown. So we should kind of keep the uh, the shields up, be a little bit careful here. I think... I think I want to get Adeline going. We could certainly Invasion here. It's just not quite as mana efficient as getting the Adeline going. And I am happy to trade Veteran here for a 1-1 one -one to start getting it going into the air. Got to leave Copper Coat Vanguard at home, though. I don't want to trade that. A 
This also is a little bit nice. If they do have temporary lockdown, we do play around it a little bit, just because it won't be able to hit Adeline. And then we should have time to look upstairs and see if they've got the Sunfall coming or not. Okay, and then with Wedding Announcement, uh, that was a nice pickup at Night Errant of Eos. Um, I do think that I want to get Invasion going because we can flip it this turn. Um, I don't know if the pathing on the Adeline allows me to choose a battle. I think it might not, so it's possible we won't be able to flip it. But we can still kind of set up here for reinforcements. So I'm going to go ahead and tap it like this. And yeah, they do have temporary lockdown, <clears throat> as well as farewell, Nissa and Wandering Emperor are coming, but no mana other than the Ren and Realm Breaker. So I kind of like taking temporary lockdown here, um, just because we are going to, it would hit the um, Delight Shield Array, so I think it is worth getting rid of. Now I guess we'll find out if I can send this at the invasion. Yeah, I guess it doesn't allow me to path it over to the invasion. Maybe if you do like full control, it will let you, but um, <clears throat> I was just kind of curious if it would give me that choice. Yeah, so now we've got, since we've got Lockdown on five, I think we're okay to go ahead and play out the Aganjo and set up for reinforcements. Could also just get this uh, Veteran going, but um, I think we want to try to take as much advantage here of the time we have with us. Okay, so they've got four mana, but they aren't able to cast Emperor because they only have one white. But they can get Ren and Realm Breaker going. My voice beckons to all worlds. Okay, so they could certainly have Lockdown coming next turn. Um, <clears throat> we can flip the Invasion here. Uh, they're going to have an active Realm and Realm Breaker, which is kind of annoying. And this will almost certainly allow them to get um, into temporary Lockdown mana. So it is maybe better to try to send everything at Ren and Realm Breaker. Let's see, if we send everything... I kind of want to hold the Copper Coat Vanguard back, but if we send everything else, they've got two blocks that can block here and here. Uh, we should still be able to take it out. So I think maybe we just, unfortunately, let the invasion sit for a minute. Otherwise, we could try to get Night Errant going. So kind of a couple different choices here. I like getting Night Errant, um, but I also like getting rid of Ren and Realm Breaker. This is a little tough. Um, hmm. Okay, so I think maybe here the play, let's try to get rid of Ren and Realm Breaker. They can trade for Adeline here, which is a little bit annoying. But we are able to take out their Planeswalker. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, looks like they're just gonna go for some trades. So we can still Knight Errant here for three, and I do like that play. Um, that gives us a good chance of flipping this next turn if we want to. And if they do draw into temporary lockdown mana, we'll still have the Knight Errant out, which will be nice. Okay, we pick up a Warden and Thalia. So if they don't draw land, we can kind of keep it going for a little while here. And again, they are going to need that double white. Okay, so they did draw into it, unfortunately. So now they're one away from Farewell. They do have Active Emperor coming. We can go ahead and drop Thalia here to push it out for another turn, which I like. And then we can use Warden after combat to uh, start scrying. That's a great one on top. Super happy to see that. So at least we know there's no farewell coming this turn. Although they do have mana here for Wandering Emperor. And they might take the opportunity to get rid of Adeline right now. We completely understand doing that, yeah. All right, so now if we Imidane's Recruiter, throw everything at face, they're still a little bit off from their um, Farewell. Could also just Lunark Veteran and then just make sure to take out Wandering Emperor, sort of set up a bigger Imidane's. Yeah, I, I kind of like that, because then we can like push more damage on face, because some of this has to be wasted to take out Emperor anyways. So I think I just like playing this out instead. So this way we just send these two at Emperor and send this at face. Now we're representing, I believe, lethal here, unless they do something. They can play Nyssa. But I think we, we might still have a... Okay, so extra recruiter is sweet. And yeah, we're just going to go ahead and throw into the red, red zone here. They can make a blocker. But even with their blocker, let's see, we're pushing 3, 6, 9... 11, so not quite dead, but very close. It'll be very well set up to win next turn. I guess they could have like another Wandering Emperor or something they drew into here. Okay, get lost, sure. We still drop them down to 
that down to two, and then we can use this time here to uh, put the extra counter here, maybe on the Phantom. Okay. Just so we have lethal in the air. Could also try to put on Warden in the inner sky, um, but I think this is fine. Spread out the threats a little bit. And that's a great draw, because now we can just use this plus Recruiter to get there. Even if they draw the land here for... Yeah, okay, that's going to do it. Yeah, this is kind of pretty close to the original build of Boros humans that I put together kind of near the beginning of uh, this month's season. Um, maybe a slight difference here, the addition of the invasion of Goba Khan. But uh, yeah, I really do like this build and it's feeling pretty good so far. All right, let's lead out here with Courtyard. I like to kind of hold back Cavernous Souls in case they put up like uh, Counterspell mana, then we can just sort of waste their turn. And here, uh, we're just gonna lead out with Officer. Um, if we do draw into like Resolute Reinforcements, Warden might have been slightly better, but we haven't got it in hand. So I'm just gonna lead out with Officer here. And we drew into Warden anyways here, which is great. So up against Rakdos, they could be doing a lot of like, uh, this could be like Control Rakdos with a bunch of burn. Um, either way, I want to get my, my Wardens down. And I think the Scry here is a little more valuable than the, the two points this turn, so we'll go ahead and Scry. Yeah, having a backup Adeline feels great. So now I think we push in with the officer um, and then just use Warden to kind of buff up afterwards instead of pushing for the extra damage. Yeah, perfectly happy to see another initiate. So that feels pretty good. Okay, and we're ready to go with our backup Adeline. So it looks like they're thinking quite a bit about uh, using Harvester to get rid of one of the uh, Wardens. We'll just go ahead and push in for some more damage here. <clears throat> Make it the extra guy. Um, would much rather do that than put another counter on the warden that turn. Just get the damage going. <clears throat> so here they could have like the three damage to everything board wipe. Um, but we're pretty well set up for it. All right, now... <clears throat> Let's get our warden going and then we can um, 
go ahead and put uh, counter here on this one. The other thing, consideration, I think against kind of a deck as grindy as this, I think maybe it's better to just use a Murex token um, to get as much value as possible and start building up a couple cards in hand. So I think I actually I like making Murex main phase and then using these three to pump it. Okay, and that looks good. And I think um, with Preacher here, it's just an annoying thing we're gonna have to get through. Not a huge fan of trading it with Adeline, but I think it's kind of where we're at. Gix's command would be really rough right here. Thankfully, they didn't have it. Okay, now that we have really good use of our mana, we can go ahead and play these out and start really flying in for some damage. We might want to hold this other warden here just because we're not able to pump again and if they have like a full board board clear um, we're going to want to have something in reserve So yeah, unfortunately they did have the go for the throat there. Interesting. Pitching Shelly. <clears throat> okay, now that they're out of blood tokens, they can no longer sack with their harvester. So here, if we bash with everyone, do we just have lethal? Let's see, yeah, we're pushing for four. Yeah, that should be it. So they're going to go to four off this, and then we'll push with exact enough to finish him. Unless they've got cut down. Should do it. Right, opening hand looks great. We've got one, two, and then uh, three. So mana to do everything. Which is a great keep. And Adeline to go with it. Very happy to see it. Okay. 
So the valley does kind of slow things down a little bit, but we still have some good stuff to do to go get the uh, night errant cooking next turn. Yeah, since we're not really going to have any good attacks here with Adeline, unless they decide to get in with Thalia. Yeah, and they are not. Okay, so now we can go ahead and drop our Warden search for three. We could also prep Thalia for next turn, or excuse me, prep Adeline for next turn. But I think this is a little bit more explosive play. pick up a recruiter and it could get a backup Adeline. Um, I think Vanguard's going to be really good though. Like they do have the Thalia which is annoying but we already have an Adeline. Yeah it's it's close. I think I do like the Vanguard plus the Emidanes here because this does represent a ton of damage. trade spellbook vendor with our knight errant I'm happy to do so if they use scrub to push it through though I could totally understand that Guess they're probably thinking about if they want to go shields down. <clears throat> yeah, they're giving us the option. Happy to make this trade. This represents so much threat on the table. They could have had the Yaganjo there, which is a consideration, but it's still worth trying to make that trade. All right, so now we can go ahead, drop out double copper coat, and really turn everything up here. We can't attack on the ground, but we can start trying to get it through in the air, and this sets up a really nice recruiter uh, coming up. Plus, it's the most mana efficient play. All right, here we're going to go ahead and tap down our copper coat since we're We'd rather trade off an, an officer than one of the vanguards. Okay, and I don't really want to add another Thalia to the board because we're sort of trying to get uh, to six mana for a recruiter. So even though it does kind of fight their Thalia, hmm. Well, I mean, we're, we're at five. We're not even at five yet, so maybe it is worth leaving it on top because we could go like Thalia plus Adeline, so maybe that's okay. Like it does allow us to start attacking, so that is actually probably worth it. <clears throat> and nothing yet because they've still got Thalia to block us here on the ground. Yeah, if they want to open the door with Dahlia, super happy to let them attack. <clears throat> Alright, now we can drop Dahlia plus Adeline and make a pretty hefty attack here, actually.
We still have no interest in trading our copper coats for like their foundry or their veteran, but we are willing to probably send in the officer. Well, actually, maybe not. I mean, officer's probably better. So maybe we just push Warden again, which is fine. Yeah, I think our recruitment officer is actually... It's definitely more valuable than their Mistress Foundry. And more valuable than their Veteran, I think. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get these ones going again. Yeah, now we can push into the air, which feels great. And happy to see that. That's a great card for us to draw into Recruiter. Uh, we are at 14, so we're not quite in, like, unless they had, like, recruitment, uh, resolute reinforcements into, like, their own Recruiter, I think we're actually okay to do this again. And just uh, open ourselves up to a little bit of damage if they have, like, a Brutal Cathar. But um, this says Ward 3, so they'd need that and a land. So this feels pretty good. And actually, we got a nice little 4 1 coming in. I'm surprised they didn't block with a veteran there. Okay, adversary's nice. But we're still going to be forcing potential lights out here next turn with our. Yeah, they're just going to go ahead and throw in the towel. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. We went 3-0 today. Uh, the deck, I believe, is a total of 6-0 at the moment, so 100% win rate. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a quick look at the matches. Okay, yeah, so we are 6-0 with this deck, 100% win rate. Um, and what we've played against so far is Mono White. Um, two games against either Slesnia or some... I think the other one was a... Uh, a green white uh, control deck with like um, wandering emperor and uh, tokens etc one boros match and one rakdos match so feeling good so far the uh, link for the deck list is going to be in the description and we will see you next time i think for maybe some standard events